Hey guys, and welcome back to Castle Story. Today is going to be our final episode here. As you can see, we've got a lot of things going on. There's a lot of resources here. And I basically let the game run for two hours plus, and I queued up a whole castle, and then it just kind of stopped, and I came back, and they all were just sitting here. So I think now is a good point to end it. We pretty much beat the in the conquest mode. We just have to get over to this last little island here and take these last two crystals, which those guys are just bugged out staring at, and they haven't moved at all since the entire time. Anyway, so what I want to do in today's video is just kind of show you this is the castle design that I started on. And we'll just kind of pretty much call it here. I liked it. And I'm going to show you guys a few more castles in this episode that I've been working on slowly. But today I really wanted to talk about like a re review for Castle Story. Because I felt like it's a good time to... F now that they have 1.0 release, I felt like we have a decent amount of experience in this now. I have roughly 45 hours in the game overall. Because I've been playing a bunch of different modes, multiplayer and whatnot. And it's just been really, really fun. So I wanted to go ahead and do that and kind of get into a bit of a review standpoint and just kind of talk about the game, see where it's going and kind of see what you guys have to say. Before I get into it, though, I really enjoy these survival um, style games and whatnot. So if there's other ones that you guys want to see on the channel, let me know. There's a few that I'm thinking about right now. Let me pull up the list real quick. There is... Kingdoms and Castles, which is a newer game. It came out about a month ago. I picked it up, um, and it's been, it's interesting. I played about an hour of it, and I wanted to save it for if we do a series on it. There's Rise to Ruins, which is pretty cool, as well as Stone Hearth, which is an older game. It's been out for a while. You guys probably know that one. It seems like it's improved a lot since the last time I played it, so it'd be kind of fun to check it out. Those are all pretty similar to this style gameplay here, a little bit different art style and whatnot. But anyways... Let's get into the re review. I'm going to play some footage from a few different worlds as we go through it. They're going to kind of help and talk about what I'm trying to get across here. It's going to be a pretty short review. It's just going to be a few minutes. But I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. If you guys have been playing the game yourself as well. But yeah, just let me know what you guys think. And I hope you guys enjoy the review. And I will see you guys on the other side. First off, what I want to be looking at today is three different categories. We have the art style. We have the gameplay. And we have accessibility, which basically I'm using to lump in the UI and all of like the controls and everything like that. So I want to start with art style. I just want to say that I love the look of the game. You can see the little Bricktrons and whatnot. They're all really freaking awesome. They look super cool. And they're just really, they're really, they're kind of cute. <laughs> I really like them. Um, it's very cartoony. It's really entertaining. And watching the little guys like go flying when one of the big things comes and hits them and knocks them off or they fall off the edge of a castle or something because they have too many they have too much weight and then it gets broken from something underneath it's all just it's pretty adorable and it's really funny and i really enjoy that part i mean you can call me a horrible person but i think it's pretty entertaining overall i've really enjoyed the art for the game for all the models the style is definitely worth pursuing in my opinion i do hope they plan on adding some more things like the warlock in here is really cool uh, it's one of the mobs that we haven't even seen in our series yet, but I've seen it quite a few times in Invasion. Um, all of the Corruptrons are really awesome. The Bricktrons are really cool. So in multiplayer in this game, they allow you to show bandanas to identify your team color. And I really wish they would let you bring that in a single player because they look pretty cool. And I'm hopefully going to be able to get a clip in here showing that. So, but yeah, the bandanas are really awesome. They allow you to kind of make it more unique for what your guys look like. It's not just the classic little ones that just are the yellow dude. They have like a pretty solid looking bandana around their neck and it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. It makes multiplayer really interesting and entertaining. But anyways, that's kind of all I have to say about the art style. I really enjoy it. It's cool. I really hope they pursue it more. Hopefully they add more resources, more foliage and things like that into the pack. I know they have like eight or nine different types of plants. Hopefully they do that with types of trees in the future, just to make the map a little bit more interesting looking. Going into the gameplay, I gotta start out by saying I think Castle Story is pretty much a bad name for this. Like it makes sense, it's don't change the name at this point. But it's more like let's build a wall and have a huge army of archers on it. Like the I've never really built a castle in the 44 hours I've played this game. I wouldn't say I've built a full castle. Yeah, there's just not a whole lot to it as far as the castle part of it. I really enjoy the game for what it is, but it's just not really about building a castle. <laughs> I was watching a stream a while back and somebody was and somebody loaded up the map of where you start with a full castle. 
And they're like, this is the first castle I've ever seen in Castle Story. And I have over 30 hours of gameplay in here. I'm like, yep, that's pretty true for what I have too. But anyways, in this offense is a lot better than defense. In conquest mode especially. But you don't really have an opportunity to build a castle. In invasion, in between the waves where you have your wall, you're constantly telling your guys to repair so that you can even get the wall set up to the point where it is for the next one. And you have to have so many guys on offense and like turned into knights or archers, whatever it may be. You have to have that offense there for them to even be able to function and do damage and defeat the waves. So during that whole time where you're killing the guys, which is ticking down the clock towards when the next wave comes in, you have to be fighting the entire time. So you can't really work on building your castle up at all until you get quite a few guys in there. You got to really micromanage the guys which is entertaining, it's really fun in the lower levels, but when you get into the higher ones where you need to have like 10 plus people attacking to even f defeat the wave and you have to have full arbalist, which is the crossbowman, it's kind of overwhelming because you have to have so many resources. You gotta go out so far to do it all. I wish there was more of an incentive for building the castle, um, but the game is really focused around invasion mode and it makes the other game modes, which we played Conquest here of taking over all the crystals, makes them feel a little bit dumb, in my opinion. Invasion mode is very much about defending your one crystal, and then the more you kill, the more units you get, which makes sense. It's really cool. The farthest I've made it up on there is on a normal invasion difficulty. I've made it above wave 30, which the highest achievement is wave 60, so I'm about halfway there. I'll probably continue with it eventually, but it's just starting to lag on me, which is also kind of annoying. For gameplay wise because like i've been making it very far into the game and now it's lagging and i can't really do much and there's not much i can do to fix it besides say potentially kill off my own people which then shoots me in the foot a big problem that i have with the game right now is enemy mobs attack the castle blocks over units quite a lot so whether you have knights right next to them at the gate or whatever their ai is telling them to attack the castle and destroy that and get the quickest path to the crystal which not all the way always is through your units which makes it kind of hard to build some unique choke point designs or whatnot unless you're really breaking into the ground and etching that stuff out because that actually bugs out the AI of the Corruptrons. There's a way on every single map in here, which is kind of an exploit, but if you dig a trench down three blocks to the point where they can't get over it or above it or anything like that and they just can't get around it, they will bug out and not even try and walk through there. They'll just go smack into a mountain somewhere randomly on the world. It actually makes the game a little bit easier, especially on the multiple point invasion modes. That's the only way to make it to the high waves is you have to choke them into one area. So inherently you have to use that exploit to break them out of the other ones. Otherwise there's just not, you don't have enough time to defend your castle and get the guys to the other sides and build up a castle on all three sides. So there's just not enough time in between each wave to do that. So you're kind of forced into using the exploit to even play the game on the hardest difficulty which is kind of lame but i can see why they're going that way kind of going off that to another note here i think castle story is a great casual game i wouldn't want to see this ever in a ranked format i wouldn't really want to play it in a player versus player format it just doesn't make sense to me in that way it's very much about just kind of building your castle enjoying the game and enjoying who you're playing with versus going around and really inherently like fighting other players fighting other people really just straight to the death right there because it's basically who can get the first units out quickly and just go overwhelm the other guy more or less because that's how much stronger like a knight is say than your classic little dude so you can pretty much just do that me and my buddy who i've been playing this with played one online like versus each other map and it wasn't even our fault we loaded the game back in and it went from us being on the same team to against each other and then we couldn't finish the conquest game until it was only one of us left so we started fighting each other and it was really boring in the fighting itself because all you had to do was kill the other dude's healer and defend your own so what i did pretty much was surround my healer with knights and so they couldn't even get to him, had them all in defensive mode so they wouldn't run anywhere. And I basically moved them forward in a ball and none of, the, none of them could die. So I literally walked straight up to his crystal and attacked it slowly while all of his knights were attacking my guys. And I ended up winning. Like that's all you had. To, I knew, granted, that's pretty end game, but that's kind of where the player versus player is. So I really hope they don't focus on player versus player. I really hope they move towards working in the single player environment and improving that or the co-op environment. Co-op is really something worth pursuing. It's very interesting. It's really interesting playing with another person. It makes it a lot more entertaining. I've had a lot of fun with it. 
I'm hoping that at some point they start a story mode. I know it doesn't really make sense, but some like campaign of a chain of network of islands, even if it's just each island brought into this one campaign where basically you go from one forced into the next one, forced into the next, all in conquest and basically trying to remove the Corruption threat from the world. And you basically get some reward to take into the next map with you from your previous island. I think that's a good way of doing it. It's a very simple campaign. They don't really have to change very much besides a reward system. And say you get to bring like extra resources with you or something like that. It's just something that simple I think can really help the game out. Beyond that, gameplay wise, the only other change I want to see, I want to see a two times and a four times speed mode or just something like that. Once you get farther into the game beyond the first little while, if you're playing in this conquest mode like we were here on the series, like I said in the beginning, I sat here for about two hours and just watched them build things. Even if I could just speed that up and because basically my computer, I literally put Castle Story on the side monitor, left it there, just watched him, make sure the guys were all still working and safe. And then I went and did something else. Like I wasn't there wanting to keep playing the game because there's literally nothing I could do besides watch my little Bricktrons run around and place a block down and their AI bugs out so much that sometimes they would pass the block off to another guy. Then both of them would walk back. And then the guy who got the block would be like, well, now what do I do? Oh, I need to go back all the way over there. So they'd walk all the way back to where they were supposed to place the block originally, which were standing right next to. And then it just kind of, it didn't work. Like it, it doesn't work very well not having a faster speed mode in this game. Kind of a bummer, but it's just kind of how it's going. I really hope they do something because there's constantly times where I'm spending 30 minutes to an hour just waiting for things to happen. Like I'm not actually playing the game. I queued up a bunch of things and I'm waiting for it to happen. And even if you look through the Steam live, the Steam workshop and whatnot where people are really showing off some creations they've done, they're like, building these medium-sized cathedrals, castles, whatever it is, and they're saying, yeah, I put 40, 50 hours into this project, mostly planning it all out, and then just watching the guys build it. Like, you can plan that all out in an hour or two, probably, and then you just watch them all build it, and, make, and you basically all you have to do is put some wood down so that they can make sure they can get to the point, because they're kind of idiots when building structures anyways. So one thing that that would help, though, is skipping rounds and in invasion is a good way to keeping the game more interesting because you're constantly getting attacked, but you need to have a little bit of downtime to be able to repair. So being able to turn that to two times or four times speed mode or whatever the devs would want to do in the end, that would really, really help out with making things a bit more interesting as you would be able to repair really, really quickly and then turn that super speed mode off and then just start the next wave right away and i think that would really really help out with the smoothness of the game because the game right now just feels slow like there's a big hype in the beginning of oh, i gotta grab this resource i gotta grab this i gotta grab that i gotta grab all these different things so i can build up so i can get my healer out so i can get the healing crystal out i can get the sentinel wards out so they start attacking I need to get enough iron up here so I can start building iron gears to make the arbalest and all that. There's a big hype in it. But after you get mediumly set up, you got a few of those guys and the resources are more out on the edges of the map. It takes like an hour just to get enough resources to like, say your army gets wiped once in a high level invasion mode, you're done. You literally do not have enough time to even try to come back. Sometimes in invasion modes for me, I've been, I've had multiple games where I've been in the 20s to 30 waves and I lost all my knights in one wave and I had enough iron back in the base to build all the knights up minus one or minus two of them and I usually have four to five knights just kind of out there as a front line with a healer behind them and more or less the closest iron took my Bricktrons the entire time just to like get over there and come back and by the end of it I did have enough iron to start crafting up the things but I had to spend the entire time literally just watching them walk across a map and back. And to be able to super speed that up so they're just going to go and do it, it would have been nicer. Granted, I probably wouldn't be able to save myself because I need, needed more than just a super speed there. I needed to like build it faster. But overall, there's just a lot of wait time in the game that you can't... That there's unavoidable downtime and not in a good way. It's not like, oh, I need a breather. That was really intense. It's just like, all right, well, I'm just going to watch these guys walk back and forth. So I really hope they inv they put in some way to speed up the game 
and move everything at a quicker rate because it just it gets old like i really enjoy the game and i constantly start new levels but i never finish a level because i get bored i really like that be- beginning of the game like hype where it all starts out everything's hectic and then the end of the game is really just boring and slow and it kind of sucks to see it that way but that's kind of how it is for me um all right so the last thing i want to talk about is the accessibility of the UI and kind of where all that leads. And the UI was really updated coming into 1.0, which was nice. They added a mini map, which is very nice to have. So you can kind of, or the mini map got improved. Overall, it's a little bit sleeker and cleaner. One thing on it that kind of bugs out is actually the clock in it. Once you're above an hour or two, it bugs out unless you save and then load the game back in. That'll update to the time, which is just kind of a weird bug in it that they can probably fix really easily. But overall, the UI is, it's very simple, it's very easy to use, but it's slow. It's really nice, but it's really slow. Kind of going back into that slow waiting period thing I'm talking about. But like when you want to make a one of your guys dig a voxel, you have to hold right click on that voxel, hope you're over the right voxel, then hit the break voxel thing on there. Then it'll walk over and break it. And then if you want to have him break another one, he's already basically running back to deposit those stones you picked up and you're like wait i'm trying to hold right click to have you break the one right next to it but he's already gone and then he runs back and then he has to break that one and then you can start holding right click again and have him break another one and it just feels very slow i just wish there was like the classic rts style control menu as an option just like down at the bottom of your screen where you have all your controls down there just the option of having that be able to clean that up would be very very nice because like I was saying, it's just slow. It's a lot of waiting time, just kind of waiting for a menu to open, waiting for this to go, waiting for that. And I really, really enjoy the game overall, but there's just a lot of waiting, as you can see what I'm getting into here. And I feel like the ability of adding hotkeys to the RTS dial controls and min-maxing would help to improve that, would help to speed up those areas right there. I know you can use the landscaping tool to do massive ones, but say you want to just do like three or four blocks, there's no point in starting a new landscaping task. Beyond that, the camera, it glitches out a little bit. Overall, I really like the camera, how you can zoom in up and down, go up all over the mountains on the height changes and everything like that. But there's times where the height gets stuck, and so it can't go up or down. You can still spin around side to side and move the camera around all you want, but the height won't go up and down. And basically, if you're trying to zoom in, you get this weird little like circle in the middle of your screen. It's just kind of annoying to deal with, so that's kind of... It's just something they can improve on. I do like the UI overall. I like how you can basically see through it. It's very clean looking. It's very simple. It's really nice. There's some tools on there that I hope they improve as far as selecting your group, selecting everything going on. And there's just a lot of different things that they can improve on with UI wise. And yeah, that's just kind of all I'm really thinking about. Overall, I did enjoy Castle Story. I really enjoyed playing through this game. I'll probably keep playing it in the future. I really hope the devs do update it and continue to fix things in it. From once I first got Castle Story to where it is now, it's improved a million times over, but the development process hasn't been the quickest, so that's kind of a bummer to know, but hopefully they do improve it. Hopefully they do keep continuing to give us a great game. I do hope you guys all have enjoyed this review. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys enjoyed about Castle Story, if you guys have been playing it yourselves. Um, If there's anything else you guys want to see me play here on the channel for this style of gameplay, do let me know that as well. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.